iambic pentameter. 10 beats divided into five poetic feet, each poetic foot normally being an iamb, or an unstressed, then stressed syllable, the basic building block of Shakespearean verse, like so. De-dum, 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 de-dum. Has Shakespeare found a way to connect pattern verse with speech-like language? I hear your thoughts. Verse does not belong in the modern theater. No, it's too artificial, too strange, simply too distracting to mirror common speech. Well, if you have tears, prepare to shed them now. <laughs> but soft, what light through yon, through wind, do breaks. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. De dum, de dum, de dum, de dum, de dum. Dull, stale, tedious? Perhaps. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the quest. <laughs> Shun. Ah, <laughs> what do we have here? Eleven beats. An extra syllable extending a line of verse, the feminine ending, hmm? or the hypercatalytic line. Now, why? Because Shakespeare is not writing cheap, monotonous doggerel. He's not a slave to iambic pentameter. Shakespeare's verse is resistant to static rhythm. Yes. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. To leave us hanging, brilliant. An extra syllable in a line is to crowd the air with meanings half spoken, partly concealed. As character is flawed, so is the poetic meter. De-dum, 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 de. <laughs> Trochee, a metrical foot characterized by a stressed, then unstressed syllable, the opposite of the basic I am. De-dum becomes dum de, used by Shakespeare to suggest supernatural. Double, double, toyland, trouble. <laughs> Spondy, a metrical foot characterized by two consecutively stressed syllables. De dum becomes dum dum. <laughs> From Shakespeare, if music be the food of love, play on. Play on is a spondy, a monosyllabic spondy. Pyrrhix, a metrical foot characterized by two syllables reduced in stress. De dum becomes the swift moving dee dee. <laughs> Confronted with his father's ghost. <laughs> my father. Me thinks I see my father. The her and father and the me and me thinks the pyrrhic foot, reduced in stress. What can be happening in the absence of syllabic stress? Is there a speechless gasp? My father. <gasps> me thinks I see my father. Or, or, or does Hamlet's father's ghost breathe within the Pyrrhic foot? My father. <laughs> Methinks I see my father. Let's dissect Shakespeare's line. An I am, followed by the Pyrrhic, followed by three consecutive trochees. My father. For me, thinks I see my father. Dee dum, dee dee, dum dee, dum dee, dum dee. <laughs> yes? Am I making good sense? <laughs> beware the Ides of March. You'll remember it is the soothsayer who states, Beware the Ides of March. But does anyone here remember Julius Caesar's startled reply? 
What man is that? Merge together. Beware the Ides of March. What man is that? De-dum, 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 de-dum. By completing the pentameter, Julius Caesar has attempted to neutralize the warning. But later in the play, Caesar, on his way to the Senate, and potentially his destruction, again encounters your soothsayer, the short line apparently still hanging in the air. Caesar speaks arrogantly. The Ides of March have come. Six beat short line with three stresses. If the soothsayer completes the pentameter, Julius Caesar survives. We are attending a four syllable short line with two stresses as a reply. Something like, the Ides of March have come and you are safe. No. <laughs> There's no completion of the security supplying pentameter. In fact, Shakespeare, through the soothsayer, will turn the verse on its head. We will now have two six-beat deviant short lines emerging from the verse, the supernatural hexameter. <laughs> Listen for a terrifying metrical echo. As first, Caesar speaks, and then the soothsayer replies. The Ides of March have come. I, Caesar, but not gone. Caesar is doomed. The monosyllabic word. Perhaps no other Shakespearean technique is as expressive. <laughs> monosyllabic words convey emotional excitement. Again. Hamlet, confronting his father's ghost. Stay. Speak. Speak, I charge thee. Speak. Or from Coriolanus. Kill, 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 kill him. <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> All right, verse of prose. Here's the situation. Behold the statue of Hermione. Paulina commands the statue to return to life and come down to Leontes. Now the lines are heavily punctuated and invite pauses everywhere. Verse or prose? Here it is. Music, awake her, strike! Tis time, descend, be stone no more, approach. Verse or prose? Certainly the appearance of prose, a staccato voice and a monosyllabic word, strike. Verse or prose? I pause for a reply. Verse or prose? There's only two options. <laughs> verse, it's verse, yes! <laughs> Tis time, descend, be stone, no more, approach. De dum, de dum, de dum, de dum, de dum. Yes. All right, we are moving forward and covering material. Now, this is teaching. When we are born, we cry, but we are come to this great stage of fools. That's all we have time for. De-dum, 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 de-dum.